Gerthy, and here's my presentation on the Nobel Prize awardees for Chemistry 2015. They were awarded the Nobel Prize for mapping at a molecular level how cells repair damaged DNA and safeguard the genetic material. Their work has provided fundamental knowledge of how a living cell functions and is, for instance, used for the development of new cancer treatments. So, here is some context as to how cells repair damaged DNA. We have three types, one of them being direct reversal, where some lesions in DNA can be repaired by direct reversal of the damage. Next up, we have excision repair, where damaged DNA is recognized and removed. Then the gap is filled in by synthesis of a new DNA strand using the undamaged complementary strand as a template. Finally, we have post-replication repair, which takes place when both systems fail and replication is initiated again to deal with damaged DNA at the replication fork. Here are the three awardees who were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2015 for chemistry, Tomas Lindahl, Paul Modric, and Aziz Sanchar. Tomas Lindahl received his PhD in 1967 from Karolinska Institute, Stockholm, Sweden. He served as a professor of medical and physiological chemistry at University of Gothenburg from 1978 to 1982. He is currently the Emeritus Group Leader at Francis Crick Institute and Emeritus Director of Cancer Research UK at Clare Hall Laboratory, Hertfordshire, UK. DNA was thought to be extremely resilient. Lindahl noticed that RNA, when subject to heat, degraded quickly. With RNA being a cousin of DNA, it prompted the question of how stable DNA actually is. Lindahl discovered that DNA underwent a slow but noticeable decay and therefore must have molecular systems for repairing all these DNA defects. Lindahl's findings over the years culminated into the conceptualization of base excision repair for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Here's an example of base excision repair. As seen, as, as seen in image one, cytosine loses an amino group forming a base called uracil. Uracil unfortunately cannot form a base pair with guanine as they are not complementary. An enzyme Glycosylase discovers the defect and excises the base of uracil. Another couple of enzymes remove the rest of the nucleotide from the DNA strand. DNA polymerase fills in the gap and the DNA strand is sealed by DNA ligase. Moving on to Paul Modric. He received his PhD in 1973 from Stanford University. He is an investigator at Howard Hughes Medical Institute and currently a professor of biochemistry at Duke University School of Medicine, Durham, North Carolina. Modric initially worked extensively with dam methylase and methyl groups. Methyl groups could function as signposts, helping a restriction enzyme to cut the DNA strand at the correct location. His work intersected with Messelsen's research, who discovered a repair mechanism in bacteria that corrected faulty matches due to a lack of methyl groups, which are known to direct the bacteria to identify the correct template strand. They collaborated to create a virus with multiple mismatches. The strand of DNA lacking methyl groups were consistently corrected by the bacteria. Modri continued to pursue the findings from this experiment, also known as mismatch repair. He replicated this in vivo and studied this mechanism in human beings as well, for which he won the Nobel Prize. As you can see in image one, two enzymes detect the mismatch in DNA. The enzyme mute H recognizes methyl groups on DNA. Only the original strand, which acts as a template during the copying process, will have methyl groups attached to it. The faulty copy is cut, the mismatch is removed, and then DNA polymerase goes ahead and fills in the gap, and DNA ligase seals the DNA strand. Aziz Sanchar received his PhD in 1977 from University of Texas, Dallas, and currently serves as a professor of biochemistry and biophysics at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine, Chapel Hill. Sanchar had a lifelong fascination with the relation between UV radiation and repair mechanisms that combat the damage. Bacteria was proven to have two repair systems in place, light-dependent photolyase and a system that functioned in the dark. Sanchar began working with research involving three UV-sensitive strains of bacteria carrying different mutations, UVRA, UVRB, and UVRC. He managed to identify, isolate, and characterize enzymes that are capable of identifying UV damage and then making two incisions in the DNA strand, one on each side of the damaged part, after which a fragment of 12-13 nucleotides, including injury, is removed. 
As you can see in this image, UV radiation is shown to make two timines bind to each other incorrectly. The enzyme exonuclease binds to damage and cuts the DNA strand. 12 nucleotides are then removed. DNA polymerase fills in the resulting gap. Ligase seals the DNA strand. Now the injury has been dealt with. What's the impact of research on repair mechanisms? Base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair, and mismatch repair are merely a few repair mechanisms DNA utilizes to combat pollutants and replication errors. However, the knowledge gained from these discoveries has aided greatly to our understanding of cancer. There is strong evidence that defects in such repair mechanisms are often linked to cancer causation. When mechanisms are turned off, DNA becomes unstable, making them prone to mutations and resistant to chemotherapy. Further research with regards to repair mechanisms and cancer causation has led scientists to believe tumor cells can initiate repair pathways to resist chemotherapy. Some scientists and researchers have done further studies on such, and here are two examples where working with inhibiting repair mechanisms has led to some very interesting results. Gao et al. mapped out how base excision repair can sensitize breast cancer cells to chemotherapeutic drugs, making it a lot easier for chemotherapy to do its job. Stefanski et al. learned that inhibiting DNA repair kinases had the ability to prevent doxorubicin resistance in breast cancer cells. Here are my references, and thank you for your time.